the, today's jargon is old growth, hyphenated. Um, the irony in this is, I know this may not seem like much to you, but on the rainforest side of Costa Rica, I'm pretty confident that this is the only piece of primary forest next to a road in the entire northwestern peak corner of Costa Rica. In other words, it's all gone. And this is what was growing on those pastures, like the pasture right behind us where we just, that we just walked across. This is what was there. And part of it was cleared just to get it open, but part of it was cleared to sell the walls. And a tree trunk like this guy right here, with the edge of the pull a logging truck up there on the top of the hill, that tree trunk right there would be worth about $2,000. Oh. Wow. A lot of money. Right, on here, at the edge of the road, about $2,000. In town? In town, in San Jose, and my bet is it's probably worth twice that, maybe $4,000. Yeah. I'm just guessing what it would be about that. <laughs> now, the biology of a place like this is that you're within 100 meters of you are probably 500 species of woody plants. And uh, if what the, we, we're going to do, if we got here two hours earlier, we would have done a field project in here. You, you can still read about it if you like. Uh, we didn't have enough time for you to do it. I was going to have every one of you walk around and try to find ten different species of leaves, which would have been quite easy, because you would have said, oh, this is one, so I'll take that leaf, and then you'd say, oh, this is one, I'll take that. And, and then everybody does that in a different direction. Then we get back and we lay them all out, and you discover that everybody got a different tin. Uh -oh. Almost no overlap between what everybody, i.e. there's one of this and one of that and one of this and one of that and one of this and one of that and one of this and one of that. It's exceedingly diverse in the understory. The understory is made up of two things. You, a few species you reproduce in the understory, like the red flower that we saw back there in the other forest, and a lot of juveniles. And the juveniles go with some of these big adults. I have no idea which juvenile here goes with that adult, for example. Now, the second thing about it from the barcoding or taxonomic standpoint, probably three quarters, or maybe more than three quarters, of the species of trees and woody plants next to you here have had a name for 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 years. In other words, they're known to science, but they're unknown to all of us. So you want to know what this vine, this, this, this is right here? You can go and make a nice press specimen of it. You get the herbarium in San Jose, and they're like, they say, well, maybe we can tell you the genus. Maybe. <coughs> we simply can't identify them. <coughs> so without a, and without a barcode, is frankly, the only hope for being able to put a name on these guys. Because once you've got your barcode library together, then you take just a little chip of this leaf, and then you know who it is. But you see, you know, how many flowers and fruits do you see looking around you? You don't see any. And also, that's the characters that are used for identification practically all of these plants. And so that's the situation that we're in. This is really, it seems crazy you can step off a road into a place is like stepping into a library that nobody can read.